Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is a true honor to introduce a friend, a servant of Christ here today. I met uh, Martin several years ago as he took a leadership role in our local chamber, representing his well-respected heating and air company. I was not aware of Pastor Turner until a year or two after, though I couldn't say I, I was surprised. If you know Martin, you know his heart, more specifically his passion for taking the heart that Christ shows us outside of church walls. Getting a little bit more intel from his leaders in his church on Pastor Turner, um, I was told multiple times, to know, Martin just likes being out there, and that's exactly what he does. From leading multiple new outreach campaigns at Southeast Community Church to spreading his light on Lighthouse uh, Christian Radio, whose founders, Paul and Vicki Hafer, are here today. Uh, to his work as a leader in Camden's business community, you see the love of Christ in just about every word and deed Martin takes. And above all, all other titles, Pastor Turner is the husband of Sherry, father of Martin Jr. and Will, and grandfather of Andrew, Aaron, Ashton, Caroline, Callie, McKenna, Rachel, and Zach. And it's a true honor to introduce and please welcome Pastor Turner. I need a stool. Last year I was here and you guys had a speaker. They had told you thank you in 18 different languages. I got to say, I was extremely impressed. She never even looked at a note. And I thought, oh my, I could never, ever do that. As a matter of fact, the only other language I know besides Georgian is Koine Greek. And when I was in Bible college taking Koine Greek and we had to bring in a Greek New Testament to read, we couldn't read anything else. My professor said that I was the only student he ever had that spoke Southern Koine Greek. <laughs> Mr. Speaker and members of this House of Representatives, Stephen Spain's, uh, Sains as well, good morning and thank you for allowing me to speak with you this morning. I want to begin by reading a story given to me by, by a young lady in our county uh, that you guys, this house, in 1937 actually helped today, which tells me how important what you do is in our, all of our lives. She writes in her own words, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer on February the 1st, 2018, during a routine hernia repair operation at a local hospital in Brunswick, Georgia. When I awoke to the news that cancer had been found, I did not mourn or weep, but stayed unusually calm. You see, I had every reason to worry for my health and my finances all at once. In 2012, I decided to end my insurance coverage as I could no longer afford it. I had hoped for oh, working 40 hours a week I could no longer afford it. Working 40-plus hours a week for years did not result in the financial stability that I'd hoped for. God was in control, though. As I met my financial services at the, our hospital, not only did he provide the best doctors for me on the path to healing, but he also sent me an employee of the hospital who was fully versed in programs offered by the state of Georgia. I began paperwork for the state support assistance program that was available. This incredible program covered my chemo and oncologist, and I'm so grateful for that. So I say two things today. First, that is because of laying my full faith and trust in Christ and believing in full healing that I am alive today. Second, it is the programs like this program that makes such a big impact on the lives of many Georgians every day. So please continue every each moment in the position that you're in now with the knowledge and wisdom that you are a part of making an impact on the lives of friends, neighbors, and beyond. Thank you, she said. Because you see, I understand what it's like to do all these things and know you don't do what you do for money. Hold on one second. I knew this was going to happen to me. I had to read that. Okay. 
Start over. I thought you guys may want to hear some positive news. News from someone that actually received the help they needed when you were there. <laughs> Her name is Christina Panzone. She volunteers her time and energy to always help those around her. She serves in our fellowship and church as a sound technician. She's a graphic artist who has a bachelor's degree from Valdosta State. She spends time in our student ministry, and she is an inspiration to so many in our community. Without this help, she probably would not even be alive today. So I looked at you guys. I looked at your bios online, and I saw that this is an extremely diverse group. I want to read some of them. Some of you are business owners, paramedics, attorneys, pilots, teachers, bankers, pharmacists, insurance agents, directors of nonprofits, farmers, CPAs, funeral directors, doctors, ministers, administrators, college instructors, general contractors, military or retired military officers, police, engineers, truck drivers, and auctioneers, and many more vocations and professions that make up this distinguished body. Wow. When I said melting pot, I wasn't lying. This is a melting pot from Georgia. Talk about a diverse group, you're it. And yet you manage to do great things for our state. Look at this. Because of you, even though this was done in 1937, this body helped a lady in 2020 to live on and make an impact in her neighborhood. She's 37 years old, and she has a chance. You see... Because I know you guys wear many hats, and I know you have many responsibilities, and I know that everything you do is under a microscope. I thank you, though, for your commitment to your community and our state, and thank you for your wisdom and knowledge to serve our state. Because, you see, I don't understand. What, I do understand what it's like to do these things, and I know you don't do it for the money. There isn't enough money to do this. So, as a small business owner for the past 20 years, I thank you for your service. As an air minister at the Lighthouse, WECC, for the past eight years, I thank you for your service. As the executive pastor of Southeast Community Church in Kingsland, Georgia, I thank you for your service. So my prayer is that God would grant you Today, His wisdom and knowledge to govern our state and that all of us would maintain an attitude of servant leadership. Please continue to serve. In the Old Testament, Solomon asked God to grant him wisdom and knowledge that he would be able to govern effectively. God's response was this, reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Since this is your heart's desire, and you have not asked for wealth, possession of honor, nor the death of your enemies. <laughs> I remember they asked Billy Graham's wife one time if she really believed that the Bible was a real word of God. To which she replied, of course. And they said, well, what do you think about divorce? And she said, divorce, no. Murder, maybe. <laughs> Since this is what he says, is your heart's desire, and you have not asked for wealth, possession of honor, nor the death of your enemies, and since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king. Therefore, wisdom and knowledge I will give you. Please stand with me. Let's pray. Father, I love you with my whole heart. But God, help me to continue to do just that. And Lord, I pray for this body. I pray for this house. God, give them knowledge to begin with. And then give them the wisdom to know how to handle that knowledge. 
so that they can serve the state of Georgia, that they can serve this 10.6 million people that they serve every day when they make decisions in this house. I thank you for them, God. I thank you that they have that servant's heart and that they deliver in Jesus' name. Amen.